No matter if you're new to life or you have 10 plus years of experience, there is always that aha or simply mind blow moment with the feature you had no idea about. That's why you are addicted to videos with new tips and hacks. It's cool for guys who make those, like myself, but the truth is that you can easily forget about not so basic yet super simple things to improve your workflow daily. Instead of focusing on super complex racks you will use once or twice. For example, let's say you writing MIDI. By default, you need to double Double click to create a note and it gets annoying over time. You can go with the faster route by pressing B and choosing draw tool but the truth is that sometimes the notes won't overlap with the grid you want or won't be the length you want them to be. The shortcut for that is simple and it needs to become your muscle memory. So command plus one makes your grid smaller, command plus two makes your grid bigger and you can also work with triplets by pressing command and three and then use the first two ones to make it smaller or bigger again. By default, your grid is set to adaptive grid. Once you change it to fixed, you can then go with those shortcuts as high or low as you want. So now all you got to do is to choose your grid size and then simply draw the pattern you want. I'm teaching Ableton, not neurosurgery, with my super wonky and precise hands. Okay, but hats made like this sound like sh Obviously, we need to work on velocity. You can change it quickly on your own by highlighting notes and then simply pressing and holding command and dragging it up or down. Or you can go with velocity randomize feature here. But lately, my favorite way to work on velocity is to use the transform velocity tool, which is actually right here. One eighth, then loop the part I guess it would be cool to have it like 16 times and then I can shape the velocity pattern however I want. Let's stick with drums for a bit, since I believe at least half of Ableton Live users have no idea what drum rack can do. You are one of them if you don't know what these buttons here are for. If you press R, you can add any sort of effects you want. So let's start with reverb actually, since my snare needs one so badly. Now, as you can see with S being pressed, you can then send all of your sounds to this specific reverb you dropped here. So let's send a snare. Since every single sound inside my drum rack have the send option, you can obviously send your hats as well and basically whatever you're gonna use here. But it's not only about reverb, you can use multiple effects here. So let's try a roar, for example, dropping it here. And I will send my kick and my snare to roar. Then distort them a bit. And then obviously I can adjust the amount of sand. So it's simply a parallel processing inside drum rack. Keep in mind that everything you put after your drum rack will affect the whole signal with reverbs and all the effects, but it doesn't need to be like that. You need to create a new return chain, the blank one here, and then once you click IO button, you can see that you can output its audio to rack or to your effects inside session. So let's go with reverb A, and then all you get to do is to decide the amount you sent to return chain. So as you can hear, I have my reverb snare set here, but once I mute it, the drum rack processing is actually clean without any effects. The next one is a mix of aha moment and a solid work of my community. Not gonna lie, it made me realize that you guys are as nerdy as me. So let me know if you want to nerd out together in a form of live stream feedback session so I can then start only, f I mean, the members club. In case you don't know where I'm going with all of this, yes, the big subscribe button down there is highly recommended. So it turns out that Ableton silently added sidechain feature inside envelope follower. That means you no longer need to put it on the track you want to follow the envelope and then route mapping throughout your whole session on a different track. It's still in 12.1 beta, but turns out that there is a walkaround and it's been there forever. It's either stock compressor or gate since 
those two have sidechain glisten options. So you need to create a rack with one chain being the envelope follower and the compressor, and the second one is dry. Go to compressor sidechain option, enable sidechain, and then choose your kick as an input. And then you can mute it. In that way, envelope follower is not reading the bass sound, but the sound from kick itself. And now all I need to do is to map it to the gain of, for example, the second note here. And it works! But use cases doesn't end there, you can use it as a morphing tool. So let's say I want to morph those vocal chops here with the ambience I have in the background. And the process here is actually similar, but this time let's use gate. Once I enable this rack, obviously it's muted now, but once I select my ambience as a sidechain source and then use the listen button, I can hear ambience by itself playing on the vocal chops track. So when this rack, one chain is with gate, and the second chain is dry, which is basically outputting the vocal chops only. Now, let's use gate once again, but this time shape the sound of this ambience with the side chain from the vocals by themselves. And obviously the rest depends on your imagination. I can then, for example, use roar on this layer, put it before the gate and then shape the sound. Maybe let's try using the note feedback, set it to note session, which is gonna be F. In fact, I used the sidechain listen trick in my ultimate utility rack. You can steal it from my website or get it for $5 if you feel like supporting my channel. The link is down in the description. Okay, I think it's time for the most underrated Ableton shortcut. Every single time someone uses it, I see loads of questions how to use it and why it's so magical. But the truth is that it's inside manual. But I get it, the real ones doesn't read it. Option, shift, and drag. You can scroll through your sample and choose different bits once you have the chop selected. So for those vocal chops, it works like a charm. Nope, uh, let's try this one. Oh. That sounds okay, but let me just pitch it down. So if you work with audio and had no idea about it, then better...